Hello everyone and welcome once again to one tutorial video uh, of Cloud Compare and LiDAR Point Cloud uh, modeling. So in this video tutorial today I will teach you how to do uh, how to color a segment and then recompose a um, whole 3D um, LiDAR Point Cloud and make it ready for Sketchfab. So um, this is a very useful tool, Cloud Compare. So I recommend you to download the software. Um, I open here a LiDAR Point Cloud that I already downloaded previously. You can download that from here. I use the Elvis Geoscience website. Um, all the links will be provided in the YouTube video in the description. So once you choose the area with this tool, um, you just uh, identify the point clouds. These point clouds are a bit old. There are new point clouds that will be available soon, but there is what you can get. You choose them and then you have to download the data sets and register and follow the instructions you have here reasons for I'm using it, I'm not a robot, and then you can start the process of extracting. I already have those ones. So once you open, you have here, oh sorry, um, the LiDAR point cloud. So as you can see, if you go to scalar field, I have other uh, tutorials on how to open, how to manipulate the cloud compare. So I recommend you to have a look at them before going into, um, before watching this video. So I'm gonna skip all those introductory instructions and I'm going straight away to the uh, scalar field as you can see here there are different ways to classify um, different information of the scalar fields like the source ID like the scan angle rank or in this case the intensity of the of the scanner and then of the each point and then the classification so as you can see there is no RGB assigned to this so if you go here there is no RGB you see how I can color this. So in order to color, there are the several options. In Elvis Geoscience, sometimes there is an option available here also, uh, aerial imagery collected on the same day that the point clouds. But if you don't, know, I went to uh, near map. In near map, you have a map browser and you can browse also the same area. Just be sure that you are downloading the image that corresponds or is closely to the um, photograph um, the lighter point cloud um, date uh, that was collected so they have to try to match otherwise you will have a mismatch between the aerial imagery and the lighter point cloud so um, this is um, you can download it also from here so you can export that area or just simply a georeference image and then you choose the the zone in this case Adelaide. This is Hindmarch and Thie Barton in Adelaide. So it's the GDA 2020, um, the highest resolution possible there available, and you download the file. Once you have the image downloaded, then we will start the process of coloring the uh, cloud convert. So to color to color this lidar point cloud, you cannot do it in cloud compare okay so um there is a faster option and that is using last tools so now i'm going to this website which is last tools rapid lasso is the they're the developer so these are ready for qgis for rgis so they have here already the processing toolboxes so what you have to do is just click download save link as and download it I already have it in my um, downloads. So it's here. It is it's a very simple uh, WinRAR WinZip file. So once you open your WinRAR WinZip files, you will have a lot of data there. So what you have to do is just, you have to go to your Windows C um, folder, and create there a folder for the last tools, exactly as you see here, LAS, LAS tools. Once you get there, you extract and you copy everything there. Just be sure that there are no gaps, spaces, anything. It's just simple as tools directly in the Windows C, um, in your C drive. Once you have done that, you have to go to the QGIS and then you just go to plugins, manage plugins, and it's connected to the repository. Just let's wait a bit. 
and you will have here the plugin set and then you just have to lose for last tools. So I already have it installed, so that's why it's click, but you can uninstall it, reinstall it, whatever it is, your case. And so this is for processing point clouds, it lasts, lasts with zip, and as it formats as well. So once you have these, you have to restart the software. Um, so the software here may appear where ena enable additional providers. So what happened is like you have to go here to your providers for last tools. As you can see, you have to choose activate it. And here you need to um, find the folder. So if this folder is not there, you just have to click on the three points and find the folder in the window C, click on that folder and it should be ready. Then you restart the software and all the last tools may be operative already, okay? So you have to be sure you're doing this, okay? Click also on this icon, and then it will open here all the settings. You go to providers, choose the last tools, and be sure you have click activation of the last tool and found and allocated the folder. So what once we have this, it's very simple. You just in the search toolbox, in the processing toolbox, you just put last, and then will appear all the last tools, um, you have to go for last color. Once you have the last color, you have to put here the input last. So in this case, we go into our point cloud. So you need, just need to choose this, um, what it is, the point cloud. In this case, it is the LiDAR. Um, and you choose the point cloud that I want. To. It's the area of interest. In this case, I already have this done. Uh, previously, I merged all the files, etc., and then just just have it there ready for this tutorial. So you just choose your last um, file. Then you put the ortho photo. So in this case, again, you need to search for your ortho photo in March. In March, sorry. Um, I think I have it here aerial images. This is the aerial image. I put it. Just be sure it's save as a TIFF. Okay, because it only has tips. If you have it in a JPEG, and what you have to do is open a Photoshop and save it as a TIFF file. Okay, put it there, and then you just need to allocate save file, and then allocate a file name for that particular, um, say, um, point cloud, and. So I will say it will be here and I will put the name color, color, okay? So let's put, okay, it will happen this. So what you have to do is put the LAS dot loss um, extension for that format and then it will be run. So now you run it, it will take a couple of seconds. Uh, usually it's quick, it's, it's quite fast. It's just five seconds. If you have a very dense point cloud, it will take much longer. That is done. You can visualize it here, or you can visualize it directly in um, Cloud Compare. So now in Cloud Compare, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. I'm going to open now exactly that um, color class that I open it. Let's open it here. Apply all, just to all, and just wait for that to open. So you can see how now that they have an RGB assign that corresponds to those point clouds. So now your point clouds are completely colored based on that image. Um, what I mentioned, I did it on purpose, is like, as you can see here, there are some point clouds that look funny. Why? Because they are, this um, aerial image is from 2020. Or 2019, which they already exist here, um, um, a highway uh, and with an underpass. And as you can see here, there are some houses that's previous, previous that were already there before the, the, the infrastructure project was finished. So as you can see, it looks funny, and that's why it's really important that you match properly your image or closely to the date that the data and cloud was collected.
the point cloud data was collected. So in this case, there is a mismatch. I did it on purpose just to show you. But we can do is a segmentation. So the segmentation is easy. We just put it up here. Just can select the area that we want to clip or crop using this tool, like the scissors you see here. So these tools will create, you can create your own polyline. So it can be a, a shape file that you already open here, or it can be your own polygon. If you if you choose the polyline, so you should close here, open and choose a shape file from the list and then open it. And once appear here, it will appear in your list of um, polylines. If not, we can do it manually. It's not a big deal. So let's imagine we want to, we can use polygon or rectangle. In this case, it's polygon. So it's, I will start drawing the polygon, okay, of the area. That I, it's my area of interest. I'm doing this quickly, but um, you have more time to do it properly. And then just right click or right click there, and then you close the polygon. Then you can choose the different ways of segmentation. Um, I've done, I've showed this before in another tutorial, so I will skip this part. I will skip the the the, the interior part. I will click yes. So now it is segmented, as you can see here. Okay. Now I will you can once segmented, you have to save it. And I already I have saved a segmented one here ready for this tutorial. This is the segmented portion. So as you can see here, um, it's already colored. You can export it or save it for um, a sketch fab. But we're gonna do something more interesting. It's like a way we're gonna recolor the um, point clouds and we will resegment it. And it's a very interesting exercise because otherwise you, you keep the colors as they are. I want to highlight, for example, the location of the buildings and the trees. Um, and I want to um, recolor all the ground surfaces, um, make it darker so I can highlight the location of the buildings and the trees. But in this case, it's not quite easy to spot. Right? So in order to do that, what we're going to do first is going to use a plugin. This plugin is the PCB shade list. What it's going to do is just calculate um, an um, occlusion, the light occlusion, and then it will just calculate the amount of light that each of these points is receiving um, from the sky. So I will keep it as a the default, which is the 256 counts um, using the northern hemisphere, only northern hemisphere set. And then the render count resolution to 1024, that's enough. And so this will take a bit. Okay, I will pause the video until this is ready. Now um, it has been completed. As you can see, it's a very interesting image because it has a such a subtle way of uh, shading the whole surfaces or the point clouds. In fact, it's just a sign uh, a sort of value of or color, which is called il luminance, the amount of light received for each of these points, considering all the neighboring um, um, point clouds. So as you can see, it gives you a very nice and subtle shading around that. It's a very similar um, sort of coloring or representation that you get in a rhino or a grasshopper in Rhino as well when, with some renders, uh, motor renders that you have, engine renders that you have there. So once you have done this, there are different ways. So one, I'm gonna create a clone, so not to modify this original one. As you can see, this illuminance can be, it's not assigned as an RG, RGB, so your RGB is there. So there are different ways you can do this. You can also change recolor these illuminance values, but I will keep it as a gray because it's, it's the best way. Um, there are different ways. So the first one is you can grab, you have to choose here in the scholar, scholar fields your illuminance or the value, and you can choose in edit, go to scholar fields, and then you put convert to RGB. When you convert to RGB, you can convert directly as an RGB value or you can mix it with existing value. 
I will show you different options. Let's say you want to mix it and I will say yes, mix it and you can notice your original colors, your RGB colors now have darkened slightly. Okay, and YB are look darker because they were merged with illuminance. So it's simply that both channels or colors have been merged. So you see it's darker and still you cannot spot clearly where are the location of the trees. Now the trees look quite dark. It helps you to create areas of, of darkness or areas that had more um, or, or of light um, in your in your image, okay, in your point class. This is one method. Now what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna create a clone. Once I create a clone, I will give you another technique. One other technique is again using the edit the scalar fields. Don't forget to select your illuminance first, the scalar fields. And then put convert to RGB and then put, you want to mix it and say no. In this case, your RGB colors have changed and now they will be completely as the scalar field you chose. If you chose classification, this will be transferred as a color. Okay, so now we keep the luminance. But again, this is what we don't need. So, but I'm just showing you these different ways of coloring. Now I'm going to create another clone. And so you can see here the RGB. This is the original RGB. Now what I'm going to do is go into Tools. Um, sorry, Edit, Colors. And then you can put here Enhance with Intensities. So you can enhance. And once you have selected here your luminance, um, do you want to define a theoretical range? You can define the theoretical range for that or no. Theoretical range is defined here at the bottom, as you can see, as F display params. So this is the 0 to 1. Let me go there to show you what it means, cancel. Um, this is the 0 to 1. So you can choose making it darker or lighter. So this is basically where you control the values. So let's go again, need colors, um, enhance with intensity. And do you want to find the theoretical yes or no. In this case, we can say no, we keep it as it is. We say yes, we can define the minimums and the maximum values. Okay, and then you choose which value of the scalar field are you gonna use to enhance your color. It can be the intensity, it can be the return number. In this case, we're gonna use the illuminance and we put okay. And you can see here, how created this sort of funny color. Um, because it has been enhanced with the intensity values, they basically merged. This create a um, kind of a different type of coloring method. You it will depend on your values how you merge them. But it doesn't look interesting in this case. It may vary depending on the type of lidar and the, on the value you are merging. But this is another method. Now we create another clone again. And this is the one that I prefer to merge. Um, I already merged with um, oh, the color field here. They convert to a um, random. We use most of the methods to convert the color fields. So now, what is the next step? I want to highlight the buildings. I want to highlight the trees. And I want to darken a little bit the the ground. So what we're going to do is a process of segmenting again based on a classification. So what we grab is this clone. I always keep this one just as a backup there. Um, remember that um, Cloud Compare do all these calculations on the go. So if you, it closes or crashes, you have to start over again. So it's really good if you want to save your different clouds um, at different stages as you assign different values or just to keep process um, just to save the, the information as you do the process. But if you lose anything here, and it cross closes, um, when you open the, the software, it's, it's a start over again. So um, we go this to this uh, point cloud. Now let's do the segmentation. So we go to a scalar field and we're going to choose classification. And I want to fill this track is on the classification. So this classification is usually using an international standard. So basically these are the ground. You can start inspecting ground and this is extra surfaces. And you will see that if these points are spurious points or arrows that or 
additional returns that you don't want or misclassification. So I want just the ground in this case, and I will I will proceed with using this minimum and maximum filter points by value. And I will, this is the, the number of values that I already defined here. I just put export, and then I will put this a name to say ground. Okay, we come back to our original point cloud, and then we go to the next. These are points that I prefer not to add because they will make heavier or complicated my, this, um, my scene or my point cloud. These are uh, low grasses. So but sometimes they are classified, they are classified here the cars. So as you can see, cars in these car parks, for example, or throughout the whole scene, you will see that the many of the cars were classified as the low grasses. So I will skip this these two points classif classifications. Um these are bushes, no, these are trees. Sometimes the car are classified like bushes. So in this care in this case I will just keep this is the vegetation or the tree canopy. So I will use again this filter by value and I will put trees here. As you can see there are a lot of misclassifications like these uh, parts. Um, these are the parts of these roofs. Um, it's very common and then it's because they were not very accurate classified and they were not through um, a lot of quality let's say um quality um control process of the lidar point clouds but we can keep it because they're minimal okay now we go back to our scene and then we classify the last point the last points are the building so these are the ones i want to highlight beautiful these are good export and we cut buildings and then we go back again and we classify the last we extract the last part in this last part, uh, we have extra like uh, points like these ones are bare soil plus bridges. So we're going to export it again. And we're going to pull it ground. And we're going to merge this ground with the other ground to combine it into one single. So to merge, you use this to merge multiple clouds. Yes. So now we merge them. So now we have the ground. We're going to use the RGB colors and I want to be darkened. So if I want these colors to be dark a little bit, um, or I can use the intensities. So we go here to the illuminance, choose the illuminance. We go back to RGB here. Okay, we chose the scalar field. We have the RGB. Now we just came from here to edit scalar fields and we convert to RGB. And I put, yes, I want to mix it with the existing colors. And as you can see, all my ground now has been darkened because I want to use the illuminance calculated um, originally with the PCV shade V's plugin. So now it will reflect, let's say, the kind of, sh it will be shaded around the buildings and the trees. That will help to highlight the location of the buildings. Now I will go with the buildings. So these are my buildings. I'm going to the RGB. Um, I don't want to use the real color, but as you can see, there is a huge difference now. If you want to keep it good, you can keep it like that. If you want, you can merge your illuminance. And there are different ways. So you can choose now your buildings and you can assign a color. Like for example, set a unit color, and then I want them a little bit, let's say gray or reddish color. And you put OK, and all of them have now the RGB value. Now you can go to Edit. Oh, you have to choose here your Scholar Fields Illuminance. Go back to RGB. Go to Edit, Scholar Fields, and then you put Convert to RGB, and then you put Mixing, and I will say Yes. So now you can see that they have a reddish color that has been overimposed now, the Illuminance values. And when you turn on your ground, you have kind of color buildings okay so we can keep it in red we can give another color if you want um, you can assign directly the illuminance value let's do it a much lighter color because they are a bit dark so what we're going to do is again you can recolor them edit color 
set unique color for those buildings. And instead of that, let's say red, I want um, maybe bluish color and light color like this. Okay, that's interesting. Now we call edit, color fields, your illuminance is here select, so no problem. Convert, mix with existing color, I'll say yes. And then I'm gonna turn on my ground. Okay, doesn't look bad. Good. We can get back to this when we have finished the trees. Now we go with the trees, okay? The same process, choose illuminance, choose the RGB color. Now I want my trees very light you know stand out so oh before that there are some parts of the trees that i don't like okay of this point cloud so like this is it's quite large number of let's say um misclassified points if you want to you, you can raise them manually i will take a while, while or you can use this tool again the segmentation and let's say i'm gonna segment this part, just be careful with the real ones, um, the real trees, and I want to segment this. Okay, I will keep a reminder like this and we'll say yes. So you see the reminder and the segment ones. This is a way to eliminate those, then those errors. So you can do that for the whole image if you want. It will take a while, so I will skip that part, but I'm um, because these were like the say the most evident ones. Um, but you can do with the rest of the image if you want. But now for uh, 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 because we have limited amount of time to show this, I prefer just to keep it like as it is. So let's go back to our okay, our point cloud. Um, so we're gonna work with these trees, right? So we grab them and then we set a color. And I will want I want a very happy light color. Oh, now we are gonna use the luminance to recolor them. So it's color fills convert to RGB, and then we say yes, mix it. And so you can see it's a very nice color. Now we turn on our ground, and where these trees are quite a lot, and then our buildings. Um, so you see that now they're kind of merging with the buildings in some cases, and it doesn't look so bad. Um, but we can recolor those buildings um, again. So we can grab the buildings, edit, color, set unique color. I want just a plain white. Wow, that looks interesting. And now we merge again our illuminance. Convert and we mix it and we say yes. So in this case, look, they highlight you highlighted the, the buildings. Some of the misclassifications of the of the trees cannot they are not very evident, but you can clean all those spurious, erroneous um, point clouds. And then you have a darkened color for all the ground surfaces, and everything looks quite like a very um, um, a very soft shadow around all the structures and the buildings. And you can segment the buildings or you can select the type of points based on classification that you really want to extract and recolor. And this is a very good exercise. Um, you, can, you can do it if you want to highlight specific event features. Okay, of your point cloud. But now there are three point clouds separated. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select them. What I usually do is I select the ones I want to merge. I create a clone. And then I select my three clones. And then I put merge them. Um, we we'll merge them with this. And do you want to generate a scalar field? No, I don't want to generate an index because that will recolor them. And then it's very important before proceeding to the sketch fab, you should you should take this into consideration. Just grab your buildings or your and you your your point cloud and you rename it here or later. It's better to save it. Before saving, you have a scholar fields. So a lot of scholar fields there that are present. Okay, all of these will add a lot of information in your model if you want to save it for a sketch fab. Before doing that, just let's save the model with all that information for us. 
So we will put um, here um, for a sketch, for sketch, okay? So we grab them there, let's, let's cloud, okay? In last, and we put save, and it should save an original resolution, and it has 1.1 million, right? Just, just continue proceeding, okay? So once you have done that, you can open that file, which is this the for Sketchfab. Apply, use the last input for the location of the points, and you have it there, all color. Now what we can do is grab these scalar fields and delete them all. Scalar fields, and then we go to delete all. So now we only have RGB colors, and it will be a much smaller size for your file. So now with this model ready, I don't know why, but lately when I've been uploading several uh, of my models to Sketchfab, I have a lot of problems with the last, last files. So you can save it as a um, last 1.3, 1.4. I found that it's much easier and, and I don't get errors. So you can give it a, give it a try. I try several times and I have problems when I'm saving in last. I will save it as an ASCII cloud. And as an ASCII cloud, you just simply put it dot .asc. So you need to you need to specify here, clarify which of these different type of um, extensions you're gonna use. So in this case it's ASC. Okay, and we put save. Um I will keep it here simple coordinates of precision, one scalar precision, comma, and I use the ASC, not the PTS points, okay? That's the order, okay? And it will save it now as an ASC. Once this is saved, now we can go to Sketchfab. So now we put the Sketchfab. In the Sketchfab, I already have my account here. I have a pro account, so allows up to 100 uh, megabytes and I think um, 30, yeah, 30 uploads free. So if you if you make your your upload or your model available for downloading for someone else, then you get credit, extra credit. So I'm gonna just put upload, and then I just need to drag and drop directly. So I'm going to. Where is this information? It's in my Sketchfab models in March. And then here in this part, you just drag it there and then you just proceed to upload. So you will get all the information quickly uploaded there. Okay. So we'll take a bit. So as you can see, it's currently processing. Um, it takes a bit, depending how big is your model. Um, you will have to spend a little bit of extra time here. So just wait for this to happen and then I'll be back to explain the next steps. So model is ready. This was quite fast. And then you see if you make it public or not, if you allow the texture inspection, if you make it free, you have one extra credit. If you make it not free, okay, you leave it like that. Or you can the price for this and you become a seller anyway. Um, then um, methods for downloading the model, etc. And then you can see and edit uh, all the different settings. I will skip the title, description, categories, and tags because there's no need for that in this. I will just put save because I want to save that model. And I will put, go straight away to the edit 3D settings. In this video, I'm not going to spend too much time on this part. Um, I just want to make a quick a quick uh, video on um, my focus was on more coloring, but I wanted you to show you um, it looks a bit ugly at this point. And of course, because I as you notice, I use a black background in your cloud compare. So if you want to see how it may look, um, you can change in the preferences of the cloud compare. Uh, it should be in the display. Um, different preferences for display settings, the colors and the background color. 
and try to match this background color with the background color you're going to use in Sketchfab and you will see how it's there. Try to match both softwares. So when you go to Sketchfab, um, I will do the same. I will go to my background and I will choose a background that helps clouds to be more, let's say, uh, similar to the cloud compare and, and more, more, look more interesting. Black backgrounds or dark gray as these ones work much better than light color. If you if you want to use a light white color background, you need to try to do the same in the cloud compare. So when you're coloring, you will not have a issue. So once you have chosen this, then we go to this part. It, it looks very dark because um you can use lights and then you can light it or add ground surfaces etc. As you put the lights, you you see here the model has lights from different angles, but it will have this sort of glare appearing in different parts of the model. If you want that, go ahead. I'm not going to spend time on this today, but uh. I prefer to make this model shadeless. And then is well you're gonna have this natural light appearing all throughout the model. And it will look very similar to the model we have done in Cloud Compare, as you can see. Then is when you can change again the background and choose look, background makes a big difference because gaps between the point cloud the points, the point clouds, um Will, will be filled by this background. So if you make a red background, so you will see the gaps are filled there, right? Um, so uh, you can make it a bit grayish color. Um, there are a lot of other possibilities to work with your materials, but that can be, uh, um, we can leave that for another tutorial. And I just want to choose, for example, an angle that it is very interesting to show this model and I will put it as the thumbnail. Um, let's say this angle helps. Yep, it's a nice angle and we can save the image. So there are a lot of post-processing tools here. You can add per sharpness, deep of fill. Um, I like the deep of fill because you can control. Um, so when you the foreground and the Ground. So you can control here um, the state of tip of fill when you're approaching the, the model. Well, I'm just going to save for now the settings, exit here. So the model should be ready later for misloading the model, and the thumbnail should, should match the one I chose. Yes. And when you make it large scale like this, the model works pretty well. And so you see all the coloring that we have applied in Cloud Compare. We have highlighted the trees, we have highlighted the, the buildings um, and darkened that ground surfaces. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it was not too long, hopefully. Um, so see you next time. I will try to post more videos soon. Okay, see you, goodbye.